Happy holidays, Young Living family. We deck the studio with boughs of holly and have a special Christmas episode for you today. Sitting in the background of every episode is a copy of my father's book, The One Gift. It is referring to one of the three gifts the Magi brought to the Christ child for his birth, frankincense. My father called frankincense the Swiss army knife of essential oils because of its multiple uses. So sit back and enjoy this holiday treat. It is the story of frankincense. Hello and welcome to Young Living's podcast, The Wild Drop. My name is Jacob Young, your host. Young Living is the world leader in producing and distributing premium essential oils. And this podcast will provide you with drops of information about Young Living, like history, product information, fun facts, stories, and even more. And we'll also give you an opportunity to win some free product. Joining us today is Karen Bourne, historian and research writer at Young Living. She was a key to help my father writing the one gift and is here today to talk about how frankincense was used anciently and how we can make new holiday traditions with it today. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Jacob. I'm excited to be here. So first question, we hear about gold and frankincense and myrrh every Christmas season. And I definitely know what gold is. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what gold is. But so many kids that sing We Three Kings don't even know what frankincense is. So let's start there. What is frankincense? It's this marvelous product of a frankincense tree, which is obtained by scoring or cutting the bark. Um, then white drops come out. They sit there for a while, and they gradually harden and turn into crystals. And um Gary believed that you probably didn't want the very first ones that came off. He would wait because he wanted quality, the very best. And so I got to be with him on a frankincense trail trip. Um, it's probably the most exciting thing I ever got to do in my life. I got to go into Saudi Arabia. I got to go into Yemen, um, Oman, Jordan, and Israel. It was We literally followed the frankincense trail, and it was wow. life-changing. That must have been an amazing trip. It was. And I got to participate in something similar like that when we were shooting the documentary of The One Gift. We followed um, most of the trail. I don't remember if we followed all of it, but we did follow most of it. So that was a lot of fun. What are some stories from that frankincense trail trip that you have? Do you have any fun stories that you'd like to share about that? I'm sure there are many. Gosh, it would be really hard to <laughs> narrow it down, but probably the thing, and I have to say that was in 2009, so that was a while ago, but um, I have had the honor, thanks to your mom, uh, of editing all of Gary's transcripts. Um, but right now, they stand at 445 transcripts. That's a lot of transcripts. And I search them and get product information, but I also search them for things that would be fun to remember. And um, I loved that when Gary talked about, um, he did a preview of what the 2010 convention was going to be in 2009. And he talked about going on this trip and how he was blessed every step of the way. Everything that he wanted to do and find came to pass. Um, he wanted to do a caravan, and he tasked John with gathering camels. <laughs> That's and right. first he said, can you get me a camel? Yes, John got him a camel. Well, can you get me five? Yes, John got him five. And they kept upping it up until John had to round up 30 camels, which he oh, did. Man. And I think the funnest thing was that um, when, when they had – we're filming this wonderful caravan. Um, a man came up to your dad, and um, they were the camels were all halted in in Petra in front of the treasury house. And the man said, "How long did it take you to put this together?" And Gary said, "Oh, about three days." And the man <laughs> said, "No way." He said, "I'm from National Geographic. We've been trying to put one together for 20 years." And Gary said, "Well, I don't know what's the matter with you. I did it in three days, <laughs> which didn't make the man very happy." So, it, I don't know. Gary had a way. Of just getting things of done. Of getting things done. Yep. And of having 
what you might call miracles happen. Oh, yeah. Because I seriously believe that he was meant to document this beautiful frankincense that is treasured by people all over the world. Yeah. And, and Gary was the one, he wasn't, he had, um, he had the cartery frankincense, but Gary wanted the sacred frankincense. And he was, I think, among, if not the very first, among the first people to ever get it and and have it for his distributors. So once when Gary had his mind made up, it just There was happened. no stopping him. Yeah. <laughs> so you're talking about that there's different types of frankincense, and I think it'd be really good to cover the different types of frankincense and why each one is different or what makes each one unique to itself. Well, it's really interesting. Um, Gary is the one of the authors, and I'm one of the authors, too, on a study that we did where we compared sacred frankincense with cartery. And we were doing um, all sorts of tests on it and came to find out that there was a difference in chirality. Now, we did a wonderful picture of John Wetton's hands showing right and left. Yeah. Now, you can put your hands together this way, mm-hmm. but you can't put a left hand glove on a right hand no. you, because they're opposite. So with chirality, explain that a little bit for people who might not know. You, you sort of explained it, but maybe in terms that are more understandable for people who aren't very sciencey, like me. <laughs> well, actually, it all it depends on when you shine light through it. The light will either bend to the right or to the left. So, so it that's refracts the chiral. depending Ex- off of the chromosome or the... Uh, just uh, somehow off of... of like I know that Gary did it with with sacred frankincense and with cartery. Yeah, we do have a machine that does that down in our lab, and I can't remember if it refracts light depending off refractometer. Possibly. Possibly, I can't remember if it does it off of the chromosome or the sugar molecules. I can't remember what it is exactly, but okay. I'm glad we were able to cover what that means exactly. Anywho, continue on with the different types of frankincense. Well, it, it's really fun. There was another company that Gary had been promoting frankincense and how wonderful it was to have this beautiful sacra from Oman. And so they thought, oh, well, that's quality. So they started selling a frankincense, frankincense variety called Freriana. And they said it came from Oman. Well, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. They just wanted to up the story. Well, that made Gary angry because they were not being truthful. They were embellishing to to make money. So if it made Gary mad, it made me mad too. <laughs> so uh, I went to California uh, and grabbed my daughter who was getting her PhD uh, at UC Santa Cruz. And we went to UC Berkeley. She got me in the library. I did a lot of research. I came home and that company had actually gone in to Wikipedia and changed the Freriana to say that it grew in Oman. Well, it's not true. Which it doesn't grow in Oman. It doesn't grow in Oman. It grows in several places, but the main place is Somalia. So anyway, I went in and rewrote the article, (laughs) and I had seven uh, references proving that it doesn't grow there. And you know what? I just checked um, this week, and that... um, article has never been changed again. They can't well, change it because it hasn't it's been documented. Changed. So we, we talked a little bit about the one gift and the frankincense trail that you traveled um, with my father on. And there was a book written about that frankincense trail called The One Gift. And you had a major part in writing that book with my mother, my dad, and my aunt as well. Would you like to talk a little bit about that book? I think the best compliment that anyone ever gave was the the chemist and PhD scientist Cole Woolley, who said, if you want to understand the man Gary, you need to read this book, because he got so into the heart of a commander on a, of a caravan. I mean, right down to the nitty-gritty details, and G- Gary slept out in the desert. Yep, he did. I mean, he, 
he experienced this, and he had a wonderful imagination, but he also had a lot of knowledge. I remember when we were um, at one of the places in Oman, I don't remember the name of it now, but we ran into an archaeologist, and I have his book, and of course I can't remember his name, but Gary was talking, and he said something about the canal, and the guy looked, I'm I'm taking notes watching this, the guy looked at Gary, and he said, you know about the canal? And Gary said, oh, Yes, there was anciently a canal from the Red Sea to to the Nile. Oh, wow. Nobody knows that, but that's the depth of research that Gary Young always did. Yep. He knew things that only an archaeologist knew. And he didn't knew. stop doing research until he knew everything that he wanted to know. Yes. And that was everything. He wanted <laughs> to know everything. everything. So go, getting back to Cole Woolley's statement that if you wanted to know the man Gary Young, you needed to read that book because he so immersed himself in that character Right down to all the details, the kinds of things you had to worry about, the marauders, camel spiders, all of that is in that book. And it was just choice. Just, it it was Gary. Yeah. So talking about him being a commander and this frankincense trail, I think it'd be really good to cover what the book was about or what it is about. Okay, it's it's the story of this man who is the leader, the commander of, of a huge caravan, and all the things that happened to him, getting it from uh, p- the port called Bir Ali, and that's not what it was called anciently, but we actually went there, uh, and I, I studied it, I took pictures, and there were, um, it was a volcanic um, a, a basalt, a dark, dark rock, a black rock, mm-hmm. and and there, they had carved out places where they would store the frankincense, and we got pictures of it. It was just really fascinating. But Gary's story picked up there, and it followed him, the caravan, all the way up until uh, he arrived up into the land of Israel and with other stops where they connected with um, the the. the Silk Road uh, because uh, there was a lot of trading going on. Yeah. So one thing that I love about the one gift is it's it's fictional and non-fictional in a way because some stories are actually true stories that happen to certain caravanners uh, or however you call them um, that happened to them on the trail for example like um, sand pirates um, you know people getting eaten by the camel spiders and stuff and so much more you know losing camels off the side of the sand dunes and all kinds of different stories that he picked up while navigating the frankincense trail and talking to the commoners and the natives there and listening to stories of past and stuff and then like you said he had such a wild imaz- imagination and um, my dad's imagination was so grand and so he he added to it as well um, but I it's it's really really fun because there's the book is kind of in a spot where you're not sure if it is real or if it isn't and so that's why I say it's like half fictional half non-fictional because a lot of it is real and a lot of it is imaginary like you know what you said and I think that's just so cool so Karen we're, we're talking about being in you know Saudi Arabia and Oman and Yemen and Jordan but it's 2009 we've got you know cars you know why did my dad pick camels of all things to go riding in? He could have had air conditioning, you know, some suspension, some nice seats and stuff. Why camels? Because he wanted to experience. He wanted it to be authentic. He wanted to know every little detail. Um, he he went to a place and he was going to buy camel packs and the halters and the whole nine yards. And, and then <laughs> he got thinking... Um, I'm not going to take home 250 of, no, no, no. So he arranged to rent them. And the man said, well, you can't take them. I'll never be able to sell them again. And your dad said, wait a minute. You're going to have camel hair on them. You're going to have dust from Petra. You could charge a fortune for these. <laughs> Gary, the entrepreneur, and the, and the man absolutely said, you know what? You can rent them for $250. Wow. One of the other things that I really liked that my dad shared with me about that specifically with the camels, because I asked him myself too, I said, well, dad, why didn't you just, you know, get some land cruisers or something like that? And he said, you have to understand that in order to look and find what I was looking for, you have to be in the person's 
footsteps and in their shoes, right, to experience it like they experienced it because, you know, something that they may be see may be at the same eye level as sitting on a camel or something like that that you may not see sitting in a car. And there was just something about him where when he played that role, it was almost like whatever person from back time, it... I don't know. It's almost like he went back in time when he was able to find things. I mean, he came across he came across hieroglyphs and he came across an old dilapidated building that had a bathtub in it and an old distillery in it. We have photos of that. Um, and then he also found some uh, stones with like cave painting, uh, caveman paintings on them and stuff. Just absolutely amazing. And um, the camel rider people were absolutely shocked by this because they had to go with us. You know, we were renting camels with them. And they're like, you you just found history. And it, it was just amazing to see. And kind of going back to, you know, talking about how my dad just got things done and was just really good at talking with people. We finally got to the treasury, which is the building that is carved into the stone in Petra Jordan. Very, very famous. I'm sure everybody has seen pictures of it or at least heard of it in their history class. Um, and if not, you can look it up on Google. Um, but we got there and we were with our film crew shooting for the documentary, The One Gift. And this is when we had members um, on the camels as well. And my dad wanted to film taking the frankincense into the treasury and dropping it off in these bags. And the guards there said, yeah, there's no way that this is going to happen. And so, you know, the film crew is just talking and out of nowhere, National Geographic showed up and they said, Where, where'd you get all these camels? And my dad said, well, I, I just started asking around and rented some camels and here we are. And he said, well, we've been trying to do something like this for over 20 years. Like you said, how would you do this? He said, well, I don't know what your problem is. I got it done in three days. I remember that so vividly. I love that you shared that too. And just like he said, they were not happy about that. But anywho, they said, well, maybe we can talk with the guards and kind of set something up since we're National Geographic and have like, they had specific passes and requests and stuff like that, or uh, access, they were able to get into restricted access areas and stuff. So talking with the guard and my dad talking with the guard, they actually opened up the gates. And we were some of the first people to go into the treasury uh, in the last, I don't know, 50, 60 years at least. And to be able to be in that experience and be one of those people myself is just not only an amazing bragging right, but just a, a, an amazing overall experience. Um, I just, I, I thought that was so cool. Let's take a break from our journey down the Silk Road to give you a chance to win one of our wonderful Young Living Oils. Sacred frankincense, or known as Boswellia Sacra, essential oil is believed to be obtained from the resin variety brought to the Christ child on his birth. It has a grounding, woodsy aroma that enhances meditation and spiritual practices when used aromatically. Topically promotes the appearance of healthy looking skin while reducing the appearance of uneven skin tones. So comment down below on this YouTube video, hashtag frankincense, for your chance to win. Good luck. So talking about frankincense, you know, we kind of covered uh, cartery and we just talked about Boswell Sacra for the giveaway. What are the different frankincenses and why are they unique and different in their own way? Well, each tree and each species, um, there's just a difference. Um, the regular frankincense does not smell like sacred frankincense. It has a more resiny, deeper f scent to it. But sacred frankincense has a sweet aroma. The very first time that I opened a bottle and took a big whiff of it, it just, it became my favorite oil of all the oils. I Love it. I keep, I keep next uh, next to my bed on my nightstand. Um, I use it constantly. It's, I don't know. It's very special. And the fact that it's called it's sacra, it's sacred. I think it really is. And I remember at the very first convention in 2010, I was in the expo, and there were a lot of people coming, and I talked to them uh, about how frankincense was so wonderful to use in meditation and before prayers. And these women said, well, which frankincense? And I said, let's put both of them on you. And 
the ladies, they were so darling. Um, I, I put the frankincense on them, and they, you know, smelled it. And one of them said, I just went straight to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I've never forgotten that. That's awesome. So um, Sacra is sacred. Does yes. Cartery have a meaning to it? Well, it's named after a man named Carter, who was the first person. He was on a ship called the Polernius, and he was actually probably one of the first Western, you know, men to see the frankincense trees. And so he actually named the very first frankincense. I mean, it was named after him. So Car- Cartery is called Cartery because of Carter discovering it, and Sacra is called uh, Sacra because it's sacred meaning. Do they have a visual difference as far as appearance go? Is there resin texture difference? Like I said, what what makes them different from each other? Well, I'm not really sure that I can tell you that there's a difference in that you could visually tell cartery from sacra. Mm -hmm. I just know that when it is distilled, there's a big difference. So the chemistry and composition of it is different. Exactly. Okay. Sounds great. And how was frankincense and other incenses and spices used anciently? Because you talk about how frankincense is such an ancient oil, and it is because we hear it all the time during Christmas. You know, frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Uh, It's used for incense burning in a lot of churches and um, cathedrals and stuff like that. So was it used in the same way anciently, or what, what was it used for? Um, it I ab- absolutely was used the same way anciently because uh, Gary went straight to the Bible into the book of Exodus, and he knew that that section backwards and forwards, and he talked about how the incense was compounded in ancient Israel, and frankincense was one of the things. Galbanum was another. Yep. Gary. He, he eventually tracked them all down and made them available to young living people. And he, he loved the Bible and he loved what he read there about incense. Yeah. And how do you recommend making the story of the wise men a part of a family Christmas tradition? Oh, it's really fun. I remember when my kids were little that that we we had somebody be the baby Jesus because we had a baby in the house, <laughs> and and we had, we played wise men and and I don't know. It's just a fun thing to do, and it, you can have the actual crystal, the resin, yeah, or you can just use get that bottle just use out. Just the oil, yeah. If there's one thing that you would share with somebody about frankincense, what would that be? Well, I ended up being a science nerd. Um, The one thing I loved about Gary, he didn't care what your education was. You didn't have to have a degree to work for Gary. He cared if you would do things, if you would do... If you're willing to work and be passionate about it. Yes, yes. And so I got to be involved in science, and I got to be on... I'm on published on PubMed. Um, In fact, I did the very last study that we did in honor of Gary that was published um, last year. And that's a great honor to me to be able to to get Gary's name out there because he was such, such a maverick, such a genius, such a kind and gentle man. And he, he had a fire in him that... Oh, he did. He just, he burned that he he got more things done. Oh, yeah. Him and my mom both. Well, I love that for you. That's why frankincense is so dear and close to your heart. So frankincense is in a lot of products that we have, and one of those products being the gift, which is a blend that was specifically made after my dad. Well, while my dad was writing the book, The One Gift, and I know it's also a product that you love so much, is there anything you'd like to share about the gift? Well, I do have to say, usually I was in an expo or I was behind the scenes, but this particular convention, 2010, I was actually in there in the audience and I got to see Gary Flumfloxed because your mother made the gift 
It was her gift to him, and she created it. And all of a sudden, a voice came over the <laughs> over the and and Gary was he looking around and stunned. You know, what are you people doing? And then suddenly, Mary comes out, <laughs> and she has this beautiful bottle of oil that she created for him, and it was the gift to go along with the wonderful book that Gary wrote called The Gift. And I love that my dad was, in a way, creating the blend without him knowing all the research that he'd done and all the different frankincense that he had found and all the other different herbs and spices and oils that he found along the way, too. And I love that that was such a heartwarming gift for my mother to my dad to go back through his research while writing the book and see all of his notes and collect them and make something from it. I think that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, there was one more thing that Gary said, and actually it's from uh, one of his um, transcripts that I got to be the editor for. He said, this blend was a gift given to me in 2010 by my sweetheart and is called The Gift. The oil blend has the oils of Arabia in it, including myrrh and sacred frankincense. Mary added Idaho balsam fir to marry it because balsam was used extensively in Arabia in what is called Arabia Felix. It was distilled in in Getty, Israel, in an ancient distillery that can be seen to this day. Yep. And Jacob, you've you've seen those photos. Balsam is mentioned in the Bible numerous times and is referred to as the balm of Gilead. Some people believe balsam fir is a dist- distant cousin on a different continent. And I love that Gary knew that. Yeah. He just, uh, there was so much that he knew. The open encyclopedia, the Wikipedia before Wikipedia is what yes. I, is what a lot of people used to call him. Well, thank you so much, Karen, for coming on, sharing all of your stories, your knowledge, um, your wisdom, your research. And we appreciate that all of, all that you've done for my dad, for Young Living, for everyone out there in the world that's listening to this podcast right now, it truly means a lot to me and to my family. So thank you once again for coming on to the show. My pleasure. And thank you for tuning into this episode of the YL Drop. Remember, we drop an episode every other Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube, and our newly refurbished website at www.youngliving.com. Don't forget to oil up YL family, and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. This is Jacob Young, dropping out. Take care.